Hey people, welcome to the channel. I've just taken the Hoka Speedgoat 5 for a first run over three hours, just short of 17 miles. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I made of it. So the Speedgoat is back. I'm gonna give you a quick rip around this shoe, tell you what's new about it. Basically, it's been overhauled from the sole right through to the laces. The main difference here though, is that it comes in lighter. It's 14 grams or half an ounce lighter than the Speedgoat 4. And you've got some more kind of traction. You've got improved kind of traction pattern on the outsole too. Now Hoka describes this shoe as a workhorse designed for technical trails. Now the midsole carries the same stack height and the same rocker geometry that you'll find on the previous Speed Goat. That hasn't changed, but what is different is that you've got a new foam basically in here. There's a lighter single density compression molded EVA midsole foam compound in there, and that is there to cut the weight. It's also there to ensure that you're getting a really good balance of this kind of energetic response and cushioning that you need when you're going longer over the trails. Now on the uppers, you've also now got a dual layer of jacquard mesh. You can see you've still got a slightly sort of reinforced sort of toe box there. Again, stone protection if you're gonna kick those things. There's also interestingly down here, you've got a different, it looks a bit, it almost feels like a bit of a neoprene, but that just gives you a little bit, I found a little bit of sort of more flex in the toe box as well, which is quite nice too. The other thing to say is you've also got this nice kind of big kind of back cushioned heel collar that's there for super comfort and a big pull to help you get the shoes on but also the way that this sort of juts away prevents any kind of rubbing and pressure particularly when you're going uphill or on some shoes if you're doing steep uphills that can be a little bit of an issue now flip them over and the outsole as i said has got this kind of new kind of grip pattern slightly tweaked you've also got a vibram mega grip kind of traction lugs here that are same five mils that you've got on the speed goat four that's the same lug depth but that new sort of mega grip is there to sort of add extra traction to these, particularly when things get a little bit slippy on those kind of steeper trails. Now, when it comes to weight, we talked about the fact that they're lighter and these are now coming in at 10.3 ounces or 292 grams in a men's US size nine or eight and a half ounces or 241 grams in a women's US size eight. The drop is four mils, that's the same. And you're gonna get a 33 mil stack in the heel and you're gonna get a 29 mil stack in the forefoot. Price-wise, these are coming in at £130 in the UK, or $145. So I'm just out for my first run in the Hoka Speed Goat 5. Uh, I've just done my first section, which is like a two-mile kind of commute along kind of urban pavements and stuff. And I'm just about to hit the river trail. I'm going to go and run around kind of the nearest sort of traily bit to me in London, which is Richmond Park. It's a bit hilly. It is not a mountain. So this first run test is going to be based on some kind of more leisurely trails that you get here in the UK. But out the door, I've, so far, comfort of these has been really good. I'm really, you know, it's always impressive to see a shoe fresh out the box. You're gonna go and run three hours in those first two miles, just slipping away, melting into the background. And so you can't really feel it. Now, the other thing is that grip I thought underneath might be a little bit too sticky for running across the tarmac, but actually it's fine. It's not too bad, you know? So as a commuter shoe, I think it kind of holds up well. If you're thinking of, you know, you're thinking of those races where you're coming down from the mountains into towns and cities in the valleys, when you're doing a big long mountain ultra, how's it going to cope when you hit the tarmac stretches? So far, my initial feeling is that this will be fine, though you wouldn't want to be on the roads for, for too long. So yeah, the plan here is to go out and do like a leisurely three hours, really low heart rate, trying to keep it kind of below sort of 135, nice and steady, nice and slow. I don't know if you can sort of see behind me the kind of trails that I'm on at the moment. These are kind of river paths bit stony, not very steep. At the moment, they're pretty dry. I think once I hit Richmond Park, there's a few more hills, but again, it's kind of groomed, compacted kind of park trails rather than sort of gnarly mountain passes and, you know, and big steep descents. So anyway, I thought I'd take you with me on the run. You can have a little look and see where we do the testing. So I'm back on the river paths here, out of Richmond Park, where I found some sort of steeper, slightly trickier trails. Actually, I found a bit of mud. I found a few little short climbs, nothing like a mountain, but something to put this to the test. I'm now two hours in, about 13 miles, and I'm heading home. So I'm in the final stretch of this kind of long first run test with a Hoka Speed Goat 5. And I have to say, I'm massively impressed with this shoe. Fresh out of the box, two hours in. It's run very, very well. It feels really balanced. Like, 
it's it's kind of soft but not squishy it's not too firm but there's good ground contact the grip i think managed well i've, I've had been sort of forced onto some sort of either hard, harder sort of firmer compact trails and some tarmac and it hasn't felt too sticky on those sections where you wouldn't want it to but when i got onto some of the steeper descents that i found and some of the steeper climbs that grip kicked in and kind of bit into what was kind of grass sort of slightly sort of soft mud it's not going to handle really wet sloppy mud that well i didn't feel like it would the bits that i found where you're sort of running through deeper puddles you know those lugs are not sort of big enough to do a good job on that but i think you know if i throw my head over to some of those trails that i've run in europe think about a shoe that might work for this where you're going to be long hours into the uh into the day you know you're doing sort of 12 15 hours this feels really balanced it's been comfortable i think it can go really long and i think i might have found myself a new ultra shoe one of the things that i'm thinking about soon is i'm going to be running 62 marathons back to back more about that later and i'm trying to find a shoe that's going to be able to manage a bunch of different terrain much like these river paths with a bit of road with a bit of off-road and these shoes feel like they might well fit that bill the uppers are very comfortable the heel hold is good there's a little bit of a warmth initially underfoot on the base of the foot but that's dissipated that's evened out and they're fine now i'm not finding them cramped uh, i find there's sort of plenty of space for my toes to move so you know again over those longer hours that's something that can come into play but not so far um yeah i think it's there's, there's a decent amount of response here they're fairly springy compared to some of the other sort of trail shoes that i've run in and i think hoka might have a winner on its hands here with that kind of compression molded evo foam it's doing a really good job and even though there's like a high stack of it they don't feel too heavy on the feet either they don't feel like they're weighing you down too much uh, yeah so all round kind of for this first run on a day when i thought i was going to struggle i've had a great run and i think the shoes have certainly played a part in that so yeah so far so good with the hocus Pico 8 looking forward to putting in more miles and bringing the full review at some point soon Let's talk about fit then. I've run in a UK eight and a half, which is my size. And I think I would be recommending people go true to size in this shoe. It fits really well. I've got good lockdown. I think there's plenty of length in the toe box. Some people have said that it's a little bit narrow and might be so you can feel your sort of little toe up against the edge. And if you've got wider feet, that might be a problem. I'm not, I've oft, I sort of struggle with that sometimes, but so far after about nine miles, I haven't had that at all. These are nice and roomy. They hold the feet really well, and I would definitely be recommending going true to size. So there you have it, people. I'm back on the tarmac now, and that is my first run verdict of the Hoka Speed Goat 5. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have any questions about what you want to know about this shoe whilst I'm doing the full review, please feel free to hit me up in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe, share the video if you know runners who you think might be up for buying these shoes or be looking for a new pair of trailers for ultras and shorter runs. Uh, I've been Kieran, it's been an absolute pleasure to sort of take you through the shoe. I hope to see you again soon on Bambi Viles. Over and out.